The Truth About Sleep Paralysis Romans 8, 6, KJV For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Sleep paralysis is a feeling of being conscious but unable to move. These episodes of sleep paralysis involve elements of both sleep and wakefulness, which is part of why they can give rise to distressing symptoms. When you want to wake up, you find it difficult to wake up. You cannot just open your eyes or move your body. You are conscious of the things around you most of the time, but you cannot respond to them. According to the Sleep Foundation, the fundamental symptom of sleep paralysis is atonia or the inability to move the body. It occurs shortly after falling asleep or waking up, and during an episode, a person feels awake and is aware of this loss of muscle control. An estimated 75% of sleep paralysis episodes involve hallucinations that are distinct from typical dreams. As with atonia, these can occur when falling asleep, hypnagogic hallucinations, or waking up, hypnopalmic hallucinations. Hallucinations during sleep paralysis fall into three categories. Intruder hallucinations, which involve the perception of a dangerous person or presence in the room. Chest pressure hallucinations, also called incubus hallucinations, that can incite a feeling of suffocation. These frequently occur along with intruder hallucinations. Vestibular motor, VM, hallucinations, which can include feelings of movement, such as flying or out-of-body sensations. Over the centuries, symptoms of sleep paralysis has been described in many ways and often attributed to an evil presence, unseen night demons in ancient times, the old hag in Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet, and alien abductors. Almost every culture throughout history has had stories of shadowy evil creatures that terrify helpless humans at night. People have long sought explanations for this mysterious sleep time paralysis and the accompanying feelings of terror. If this has happened to you before, you should know that it is something terrifying. It is a scary thing. When you finally wake up, you feel weak and stressed. Now looking at sleep paralysis from a worldly perspective, the explanation given is that it is linked with the following seven things. One, insomnia. Two, disrupted sleep patterns. For example, because of a work shift or jet lag. Three, narcolepsy, a long-term condition that causes a person to suddenly fall asleep. Four, post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD. Five, general anxiety disorder. Six, panic disorder. Seven, a family history of sleep paralysis. But we are not carnally minded. We are not fleshly minded. For the Bible tells us in Romans 8, 6 KJV, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. There have been different explanations given to sleep paralysis. Some people call it sleep demons holding one down to the bed. The ancient people believed it is associated with a supernatural being, probably demons that are trying to prevent people from waking up. This is one of the reasons why I feel we as people are ungrateful sometimes when we forget to thank God for allowing us to wake up. The truth is that when you are asleep, many things are happening in the spiritual realm. Battles are going on over your life. Using our deductive reasoning skills, it is evident that the experience of sleep paralysis is not something that God brings into our life. So, then if God is not the author of sleep paralysis, it has come from our enemy, the devil. The world will try to give you scientific explanations with regards to this, but a true child of God knows the demonic attacks are real and the experience of sleep paralysis and demonic attacks written all over it. But we as the children of God have been given the command to fight. Ephesians 6, 10 through 11. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. If these spiritual attacks happen often, they are coming because you are not fighting them. It will get to a stage that the duration will increase. There have been many out-of-body experiences that people have shared. They noticed their soul left the body and they were unable to move the body anymore. I am telling you that if this happens, it is a spiritual attack and you need to respond to it. Do you think the devil wants you to sleep peacefully and wake up? The kingdom of darkness is not happy that you are alive, the Bible tells in John 10.10. 10, the thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. 
What are the things that you must do to prevent this attack? 1. Identify they are not just physical. You must set your mind that you are not fighting flesh or stress or whatever explanations you may have been given. Know that it is an attack on you. Ephesians 6.12 For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. The earlier you realize this, the earlier you fight these spirits. What the devil is doing is that he does not want you to know that some things are attacks from him. He wants you to believe that there are mere physical experiences that are not backed spiritually. You must know this. There is nothing that happens in the physical that is not backed spiritually. You have to address things in the spirit if you want to see positive results. Secondly, be determined to fight these evil spirits. For those of you who have experienced sleep paralysis, did you enjoy that experience? Did you enjoy what you went through? Did you enjoy the feeling of wanting to wake up and not being able to? Did you enjoy the feeling of being pressed to your bed and not being in control of anything? The answer to all of these questions is, no, you didn't. When you were being pressed, the devil knows that you are helpless here. He could do anything to you and you would not be able to do anything, but thanks be to God. Psalm 4, 8. I will both lay me down in peace and sleep. For thou, Lord, only makest me dwell in safety. The devil is always looking for a perfect time to get to you. You must not allow this to happen. What you must do is make up your mind that you will never allow the devil to take advantage of you. Have the determination to fight. It is time to say enough is enough. You cannot be pressed down. It is not for you. You cannot be attacked like you are a victim. You are a child of the Most High. You are a child of the Most Powerful. No demon should be able to be near you. No demon should be able to attack you while sleeping. Make up your mind now that you will not allow this attack anymore and get aggressive with your prayer life and pray against the attacks. I will never stop mentioning it as one of the solutions to our problems. One of the ways we fight is through prayer. We Christians don't go and meet people and fight them physically. We address the issue in the spirit on the place of prayer. We go to God and tell him all that we want him to do for us. It is not enough to say you are determined to fight these spirits. It is not enough to say that you want to stop these attacks. Faith without works is dead. You cannot just sit down there and say you are determined without doing anything. One of the things you must do is pray. Put on the whole armor of God and fight. And fight to win. Don't sit down looking helpless. You must be in charge. You must tell the devil that enough is enough. You must let him know that you carry the power of God in you. Put on the whole armor of God. Ephesians 6, 13. Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. You are not expected to back down. You must fight. Don't you know that you have the mark of God on you? Don't you know that no one is supposed to attack you because of the mark of Christ you carry on your body? Stop allowing these attacks. Galatians 6.17 KJV From henceforth let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. This is what you should say to the devil. No one is allowed to attack you. No power is allowed to make you have sleep paralysis. Finally, Galatians 5.16 this I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Be in the Spirit at all times. Do things that will glorify God, and you will overcome attacks. Don't go out of Christ. He is the only one who can help you and save you from every form of evil that may come in the day or the night. If you trust in the Lord, you will not be afraid of any terror by night. Psalm 91, 4-6 He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wing shalt thou trust. His trust shall be thy shield and thy buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. Benefit 6. God will take away our fear. Psalm 91, verse 5 to 6. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, 
nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. God wants to communicate to us that he is the one who can take away our fear. He demonstrated this by promising us several things to overcome fear. He affirmed that we would sleep and nobody would be allowed to make us fear. He has the capacity or network to guarantee our security. All the believers in the Lord Jesus Christ should always remember that God is watching over each of them, both day and night, because he never sleeps or slumbers. Benefit 7. God will protect us. Psalm 91 verse 7. A thousand shall fall at thy sight, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. There's a faithful saying from Dr. Thomas L. Constable. The believer is invincible until his or her time is up. God decreed that nothing shall, by any means, hurt us. A paranormal event or power, for example, the appearance of a ghost, can be defined as something that cannot be explained by scientific laws and is thought to involve strange, unknown forces. Science may be able to provide some explanations for paranormal events. To name a few, they include ghosts, demonic activity, demonic possession, hauntings, and unidentified flying objects, UFOs. There are many more events and occurrences that can be categorized as paranormal activity. But today, we are going to focus on answering one particular question. Are ghosts real? Now, some of the paranormal activity we watch and hear about are very likely to be hoaxes. There are some people who simply manufacture stories about paranormal activity simply to receive attention from others. And in some cases, other people can genuinely see something and innocently mistake it from a paranormal event, when there is a perfectly scientific and logical explanation for what they saw or experienced. However, we as Christians know and understand the reality of the spirit world and Bible tell us many instances where spirits have taken form and appeared physically in the natural world. However, if there is genuine evil spiritual activity occurring, it would have to be the work of demons. But today we are going to focus on answering one particular question. Are ghosts real? People who approach the topic of ghosts from a non-biblical perspective believe that ghosts are human spirits, disembodied spirits of humans. They are the spirits of the dead that have not yet passed to the other side of life for whatever reason. According to some cultures, and it is believed that when a person has an untimely death, their spirits go about because it was not their time yet to die. Another belief which can be traced to ancient Egypt is that when someone dies poor, they are not allowed to pass to the other side because they have nothing to give the gatekeeper. Therefore, the spirits of these people are not able to be laid to rest, so they linger and walk about the earth. All of these things are just beliefs, according to different cultures. Also, if you watch videos on testimonies of people who claim to have seen a ghost of their loved ones, you will see that they have a valid description or a valid point about the person. Are they trying to tell their loved ones they left something behind? The Bible categorically does not support this statement. Hebrews 9, 27 And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. Furthermore, the Bible states in Job 7, 9-10, As the cloud is consumed and vanisheth away, so he that goeth down to the grave shall come up no more. He shall return no more to his house, neither shall his place know him any more. The Bible does not mention anything about disembodied spirits haunting people. It teaches us clearly that when a person dies, their spirit then goes to one of two places, heaven or hell. If the person is a believer in Jesus Christ, their spirit is carried into the presence of the Lord in heaven. The Bible states in 2 Corinthians 5.8, We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. However, if the person is not a believer in Christ, their spirit is cast into hell, where there is a weeping and a gnashing of teeth, like rich man in the story of the beggar and the rich man. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom, 
the rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. If people do not come back after death, then what are ghosts? So, what then is the cause of paranormal activity? Because the truth is there are people who have genuinely experienced paranormal activity. There are some people who have seen real figures appear and disappear before their very eyes. There are documented cases of people hearing strange and unexplainable noises in their homes and the sky. What then of people who have seen their furniture moving around and there's no one there moving it? Unfortunately, for some people, this is their reality. I remember a testimony of a mother who told me about her adult daughter, who whilst she was visiting a friend's house, as she slept peacefully at night, her daughter was literally pulled out, yanked out of her bedsheet, and into the corridor, and she looked around and the figure disappeared before her very eyes. How can we explain these occurrences? Because the truth is there are people who genuinely experience paranormal activity. My pastor was preaching about this experience with paranormal activity, and he told us one morning he looked at the foot of his bed and he saw a man standing there. Just as clear as day, he saw a man standing right at the foot of his bed. And he said, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And that man literally disappeared. They are demons. There is nothing friendly about a ghost. It is something that us children of God should not play around with. Evil spirits or demons can possess people, dwelling within them and controlling them, but not just people, even animals. The perfect example of this was when Jesus delivered a man. The demons spoke to Jesus and the conversation went the following. Matthew 8, 29-32 And behold, they cried out, saying, What have we to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God? Art thou come hither to torment us before the time? And there was a good way off from them a herd of many swine feeding. So the devils besought him, saying, If thou cast us out, suffer us to go away into the herd of swine. And he said unto them, Go. And when they were come out, they went into the herd of swine, and, behold, the whole herd of swine ran violently down a steep place into the sea and perished in the waters. As a Christian, you cannot believe that ghosts are haunting people. It is a lie that the spirit of a dead person torment people. It is a demon that is haunting or tormenting someone. Demons have the power to possess, and they can inflict someone with pain. They can make one see horrible things. Both angels and demons have the power to cause the supernatural to happen. We see in the book of Revelation where angels cause a great deal of occurrences to happen here on Earth. Revelation 8, verse 2 to 6 reads, And I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. Then another angel, having a golden censer, came and stood at the altar. He was given much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense, with the prayers of the saints, ascended before God from the angel's hand. Then the angel took the censer, filled it with fire from the altar, and threw it to the earth. And there were noises, thunderings, lightnings, and an earthquake. And then we see the trumpets being blown. The first trumpet caused the vegetation to be struck, and a third of the trees were burned up, and all green grass was burned up. The second trumpet caused the seas to be struck. John saw the second angel sounding his trumpet, and something like a great mountain burning with fire was thrown into the sea. 
The third trumpet caused the waters to be struck. Then the third angel sounded, and a great star fell from heaven, burning like a torch, and it fell on a third of the rivers and on the springs of water. Then the fourth trumpet, the heaven struck. Revelation 9 verse 12 reads, Then the fourth angel sounded, and a third of the sun was struck, and a third of the moon, and a third of the stars, so that a third of them were darkened. A third of the day did not shine, and likewise the night. And I looked and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth, because of the remaining blasts of the trumpet of the three angels who are about to sound. Then the fifth trumpet, Apollyon the Destroyer, was released. We see in the book of Revelation where angels cause a great deal of occurrences to happen here on earth. Angels and demons can directly affect this world. Look at what the devil did to the life of Job. The demons can also do something extraordinary. Acts 16.16 16, KJV And it came to pass, as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. This girl was possessed by demons who was able to do this. They were using this girl to make money. Paul cast the demon out of this girl. This is just to let us know that some things happen on earth are just the works of angels or demons. They could make things happen in supernatural ways. The ghosts that people claim they are seeing are not the people who have died. They are demons appearing like that. We must know this and be able to deal with every appearance of these demons. This is the reason why Paul said we should not be ignorant of the dead. We should not lack the knowledge of the people who died in the Lord and those who did not. What these demons always feast on is fear. When they see the fear in you, they start manifesting in different forms. You must be strong. You must be against every appearance of the demons. Do not give in to the false doctrines that encourages reincarnation. Do not believe anyone who tells you that ghosts are people who died and have not been judged. Lazarus in the Bible died for four days and was able to come back alive because Jesus has the power to give life. Jesus gave Lazarus life. He is powerful to do that. This does not mean that Lazarus was reincarnated. Holding on to the word of God is important in this life. If we do not hold on to it, we will be deceived easily. We will be forced into believing things that are not biblical. We must pray to God for wisdom and the spirit of understanding to be able to get these things. So to conclude, we as Christians do not entertain ghosts. They are not humans, because the Bible has clearly told us in Job, As a cloud disperses and vanishes, so those who die shall go away forever, gone forever from their family and their home, never to be seen again.